Welcome back to the Coach's Corner. Been a little while since we've sat down and talked. Uh, kind of since coming back from the semester break, now four games into the conference portion of the schedule. Um, what have you maybe seen from the team that you've liked in these four games that may be you know, an improvement on, on the first half of the season? Well, since we've been back for Christmas, we're I think we're five and three. We went two and two in our non-conference portion, and now we're three and one. And um, you know, we we've done some things that very well. We've played with a lot of energy um, in most of our games. I think we struggle a little bit out at the Dartmouth tournament. Uh, quick turnaround from winning the Three Rivers Classic, but uh, we played with a lot of energy. We've scored goals. Our power play is still uh, doing very well. Um, our penalty killing has improved. It's we've got to control our emotions a little bit better. One of the things that we wanted to work on coming into the, this uh, second half of the year is uh, taking less penalties, so it put le puts less stress on our, our penalty killers and our consistency within our game. And I think uh, uh, we've had highs and lows throughout the season, and we need to get a little bit of consistency through our game. But that being said, we're, we're in first place. So, I mean, how much can you really complain, except that you could be a little bit better than, than where we are record-wise? Uh when you look at maybe this last series with Holy Cross, um, top two teams in the conference, uh, the, the first night I think we couldn't have asked for a more entertaining game from a fan's perspective. I don't know if you guys felt that way on the bench as much, but back and forth, um, you know, one goal game throughout. Did that have a little bit of a different feel to it than just a regular conference game? Well, the pace was up a little bit, and I think everybody's emotions were a little bit high. Um, they had high emotions. Our players had high emotions. Our bench had high emotions. Um, I think there was a lot of uh, extracurricular activities going on from, from a lot of different sources in that game. But I think, uh, you know, I think really I think it worked out the way it was, the way it was supposed to. We got the bounces on uh, Friday night. Uh, one bounced in off of uh, Brandon Denham's uh, stick, uh, one off his rear end. Uh, we got a bounce out in the slot. They got the bounces on uh, on Saturday night. And, uh, you know, I think probably if you look at things, I think if we look at our play, our play was better on Saturday night than Friday night, and we stole that one. And it might be the other way around again because I think we played better on Saturday night. So uh, probably each team probably got a, got what they deserved last weekend. But it was a, a very emotional series, and um, that's one of the things that we've got to make sure that we keep ourselves under control a little bit when uh, – um, teams are, are trying to to get us off our game and we got to make sure we stick to that. Um, as you head into the se series with Mercyhurst this coming weekend, what do you know about their team this season compared to maybe what people are used to seeing in the in the last few? Well, they're a young hockey team and I think if you look at the last four years, you've seen the, the same guys that have been scoring and the same guys that are at the top of the, the, the lineup, lineup chart. They've got some uh, very good hockey players, but they're young. Um, their leading scorers, uh, uh, Jack Riley, his uh, dad's the coach at, uh, uh, at Army. And uh, I think that you just you see a different Mercyhurst team than what you had in the past with graduating 10 guys, different goalies. Uh, uh, Brandon Wildong, who was very good against us in the, CH, or the Atlantic Hockey uh, uh, semifinals last year, he, he's back. Um, he's been playing a little bit with Adam Carlson. So, I mean, there's, they're a good hockey team. Rick Godkin always has them prepared to play their system. And we have to make sure that we stick to our game because they play sometimes a, a little bit or, unorthodox, run and gun and, and uh, throw pucks off the glass and, and different things. But we got to stick to our system and play our game. But Rick has his team playing very well when uh, they play how he wants them to play. And uh, he's a very good coach, and I'm sure it'll be a good weekend. This weekend, a couple of things going on. A jersey giveaway on Saturday night, but first Military Appreciation Night this Friday. Can you tell folks just a little bit about it's the it's about the Warrior Foundation? Uh, they were I know a part of this game last year. Can you just share a little bit about them? Yeah, Steve Monteloni and uh, Patrick Hammonds and and uh, Brandon Rumbaugh and a lot of people that uh, have put a lot of time and effort into this organization. And um, it's a it's a little bit uh, about like the Wounded Warrior Project, but it's uh, local. It's uh, all the money goes to to help vets and and. Uh, uh, retirees and people injured in, in combat in the tri-state area. So it's more of a local um, version of uh, Wounded Warrior. I know that uh, Steve's probably getting all mad because I, I bring it up, but they do a tremendous job. Uh, but to compare it to something, that's where, where it's compared to. But they do a tremendous job in, in uh, helping the, the military. They're involved in a lot of different things. They do a lot of activities. Uh, Brandon uh, Rumbaugh is a, a, a world-class power lifter. 
um, and he was injured in uh, in uh, combat and, and came and spoke to our team uh, this past year before before our 24 win season and um, dropped the puck last year. He'll be in attendance. He's a, a really good guy. We, we presented him with a jersey. We're excited to have him back again to another game. And Steve puts a lot of time and effort into all their events. And they run a golf outing. They run uh, a gun show. They run the they work with us on this. And um, you know they've they've got so many different contacts throughout the area that are excited about their organization. I think they've got two different radio spots set up with me to go on with both of them on uh, Wednesday morning and then again on Thursday morning just because everybody wants to help this because they know it stays local. And I can't say enough about uh, Steve and Brandon and, and Patrick Hammonds and even uh, Mike Pallarino who helped uh, uh, get me in touch with the, this group who's also in the, in the Marines. So it's a, it's a good group and uh, the money goes to, uh, uh, this is, this is a, a more of an it's about the warrior awareness weekend. Uh, they're not going to be here asking for money. They're going to have brochures here, but we're honoring them, and we want uh, uh, active, active duty uh, retired vets to, to all be a part of uh, Robert Morris hockey. And what way to better, better to do it is to wear a camouflage on Military Appreciation Weekend. Yeah, the jerseys look just terrific with uh, sharing that It's About the Warrior logo on them and, and saying so on the back. Nice to see one name maybe across you know, the back of all the jerseys this weekend. Well, you're going to have to buy a program, that's for sure, because you're not going to know. Uh, uh, if you're coming to see the, the names in the back, it's just going to be, a, it's about the warrior. So you have RMU on the front, and it's about the warrior on the back, and a kind of a combination of our two logos. Uh, it was a really well-done jersey, and I liked it last year, so we're going to keep it, wear it again this year, and hopefully it gets awareness out about our, our it's about the warrior foundation, and, and uh, hopefully we have another good game. We, we won them last year, so hopefully we can win again this year with them.